So next we're going to go over this problem called ternary heaps. Um, you may or may not have seen this in section, um, but I'm going to go over it anyway. Uh, it's pretty much the same as inserting into a binary heap, except the catch is that we're going to have three children, or up to three children per node, instead of up to two children. Um, this is just to show that the properties of a heap are strong and are still going to be applied in a shape like this, and it's kind of to drive home, again, how inserting into a heap works, no matter what the shape is. Um, so a ternary heap, uh, like I said, is going to be up to three children per item, so it's going to look like something, and then three things, and then three things for each one, so on and so forth, and this would have three, like that. Um, but let's do the algorithm as we know it. So we put the five at the first open spot, which is our root spot. So five goes here, um, and then we put the 20 at the first open spot, which is here. Check if we need to percolate it up, which we don't, since uh, 20 is larger than five. And then we put the 10 at the next spot, which is the middle child, um, since there's up to three children. And no swap needs to happen here, since 10 is larger than five. And then we put the six at the rightmost child, and again, six is larger than five, so we can stay there. The next item we put is here, the seven. Seven goes in now the next layer, since the first and the second, or the zeroth and the first layer are full. Seven goes here. We realize that seven is smaller than 20, so they need to swap. So let me do it like this. And I'm using one note. That's the fastest way to do it. So the seven goes here, the 20 goes here. Next item we put, now that we've done the seven, is this three. Three goes here, and now we clearly see we need to swap the three with the seven, since three is smaller. Um, and then again, we have to apply swapping recursively. So we look up from three, and we find that three is smaller than five. Um, big revelation. You swap the three with the five. Now five goes here, and now three is our root, which makes sense because three is the smallest of all the items we have so far. Next item we're going to put, now that we've done the three, is the one. So the one becomes the rightmost child. Let me give myself a little bit more space. It's hard to draw ternary heaps. Um, so the seven goes here, and we, the one now goes here for now. Um, percolate it up. So we're going to swap the one with the five, and then we're going to swap the one with the three. Um, so one and five swap. So five goes here. And then one and three will swap. So one goes here, three goes here. And now one is our new minimum, which again makes sense because one is the smallest of all the items so far. And then now we move on to two. This uh, sort of all the children of three are full. So we put the two at the leftmost of 10. Um, and we see we're going to have to swap two with 10, but we don't need to swap two with one. So we only have to do one swap for a change. So we take out the 10 and swap it with the 2. And then if you want, you can do one last check to make sure that all the heap properties apply. 1 is smaller than 3, 2, and 6. 2 is smaller than 10. 3 is smaller than 20, 7, and 5. Everything seems to check out. And the heap is as full as it can be. That's good. That's what it would look like. And then now, how do we want to represent this as an array? Well, as we saw with binary heaps, what we just do is we go with the first layer, put the first item, and then we go the next layer, go from left to right, and then the next layer, go from left to right. We're going to do the same thing with our ternary heap. Now, this problem specifies that we want to start at index 0. Remember I said earlier you can choose whichever one you want? Well, unless the problem tells you what to do. In that case, you go with the problem. So we're going to put the 1 first. Oops. So it's 1. And then we saw it's 3, then 2, then 6 as the next layer. And then it's 20, 7, 5, and 10. Um, if we draw this as an array, as we're used to seeing, we start it with index 0. This is 0, 1, 2, and so on. This is what it ends up looking like. So it's pretty similar. It's like the same way as you would represent a binary heap, except just with three children. Um, but that means that our formulas are going to be a little different to find um, child to parent and parent to children. So let's go over how it would be. So going from 
um, child to its parent. For a binary heap, remember when we're starting at index 0, um, this is a formula from going from child to its parent. Um, as we see, there's a 2 here. So let's try to do some guess and check. What if we just replace the 2 with a 3? Would make sense, right? So let's say it's... That was a horrible arrow. Let's say that it's i minus 1 divided by 3. Does that work? Well, let's check it out. So what is the child of index 7? What's the child of 10? We can see that it's 2. So let's try to do index 7 up to its parent. 7 minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to 6 divided by 3, which is index 2. An index 2 item, index 2's item is our 2. 10's parent is 2. So that works out. That may have been a lucky guess, though. Let's try it with now this 5. So item 5, its parent is this 3. So item 5 is at index 7, or index 6, excuse me. So 6, let's try the formula. 6 minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to 5 over 3. And 5 over 3 is like 1 and 2 thirds, so it would be 1.66 repeating. Um, but as I said earlier, with Java, when you're dividing integers, you always round down, no matter what. Even if it's 1.9999, you round down. So this becomes 1. So this formula is telling us, telling us that 5's parent is the item at index 1. What's the item at index 1? Well, it's the 3. And 5's parent is 3. So that seems to check out. We'll say that works. Now, how do we want to do this? Parent to children. Um, again, for reference, here's the formula from going to parent to children in a binary heap. Um, and again, we can try to just change this 2 to a 3. Um, maybe do a lucky guess again. 3i plus 1, 3i plus 2. And, I don't know, we have a third child. So why don't we just add a 3i plus 3? That seems to make sense intuitively, right? It's just what you would guess. Um, so let's check that this works. Um, let me erase all this. So for index 0, its first child would be at 3 times 0 plus 1. Its second child would be at 3 times 0 plus 2. And its third child would be at 3 times 0 plus 3. And that's indexes or indices 1, 2, and 3. And the children of 1 are indeed 3, 2, and 6, as we can see from this. So that works for that. Um, let's try it for, um, let's see, uh, our item 3. So item 3, its children should be uh, 27 and 5. So item 3, 3 times 1 plus 1, 3 times 1 plus 2, 3 times 1 plus 3. This gives us 4, 5, and 6. What are the items at 4, 5, and 6? Well, indeed, it's our 27 and 5. So this fully works. But as you can see, this gives you some practice with sort of applying a formula to a sort of different set of rules. Um, if you want, you could implement a ternary heap like this. It's pretty similar. Uh, it's not too bad. So that's how you do that.